as a player coming out, you know, I was 275 pounds. Of course, they listed me as, I don't even know what, maybe 250 or something. I think that's what they hung on me for my whole career. You know, I was playing, I was playing defensive end, some defensive tackle. The moment I was drafted, I was at Burger King eating four Whoppers. I had my buddy Leo Wisniewski, who later played with the Colts, across the table from me. And the radio was playing in the place. And um, I had finished my first one, thrown down my second one. I was in the middle of my third one when it came over the radio. It said uh, Penn State's Matt Millen was taken by the Oakland Raiders in the second round. And I looked up. I had my sandwich in my hand and with one waiting. I looked across the table at Leo and said, they're going to play me at linebacker. And Leo looked at me and said, then you won't be needing this. And he took the other, the fourth whopper and threw it down his face. And we walked out the door, and Leo tells a story. And apparently there was some woman who walked in, and I turned to her and I said, I just got drafted by the Oakland Raiders. And I gave her a kiss and we walked out. So I knew really when it came across the, uh, when it came across the radio that I was, I was going to be a linebacker. And uh, I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know if there were any 270-pound linebackers in captivity, but they, but they were about to get one. The physical part was always very easy for me. And as I learned when I got to the Raiders, that was something that they were looking for. In fact, the first time that I, uh, the first, my first film sessions with the Raiders, with Charlie Sumner, um, he brought me in. And he sat me down and he said, look, these are the plays that you have to stop. He showed me these plays of, of John Hanna coming off the ball and Ed White. And, and they were just horror films. They were just rejecting people left and right and blowing them out of there and guys getting hurt. And, and they said, you need to stop these two things. And so I had embedded in my mind, okay, I've got to, I got to whip John Hanna and a one-on-one -on -one stuff and I got to beat Ed White. And if I can handle this, we're going to be better. Somehow, that's how I, that's what they told me, so that's what I believed. And um, I remember we played the Patriots in the preseason, and here's John Hanna. And it's like, okay, well, I remember these tapes. So he came out, and I, I hit him so hard. <laughs> he, he went flying. Of course, the running back ran right past me. And, uh, and I, I yelled something at him I can't remember anymore. And he said, the running back went over there. I said, I, said, I don't care. I did what I was supposed to do. You know, I grew up in a family of 11 where you had to spit on a piece of meat to get some. And people think I'm kidding, but you did, <laughs> you did that. And, um, and so you just kind of learn. You learn if you need something done, you do it yourself. And if something needs to be done, don't wait for somebody else to do it. Go do it. So when I went to the Raiders and they said, this is your job, I took them literal. If they said, this is your huddle, then it was my huddle. Well, I started calling defenses from the time I walked in. And um, if adjustments needed to be made, I adjusted them. I just assumed that's what they wanted me to do, so I did it. And if they didn't want me to do it, they would tell me. And if they didn't tell me, I'll assume everything's fine. We go forward. I can remember a time my rookie, this was my rookie year, we were on the field and they sent a defense in and we didn't have the personnel for it. And, and so I, I, I called the defense and I realized that we didn't have the people. So I, I, checked, I checked out of the defense and I got us into something. And we stopped them and I looked up to get the signal from the sideline from Charlie and he signaled in it again and I, I, I shook it off. Like, no, we can't do that. And um, and so then we, I turned around, and they're, they're coming to the line of scrimmage. So I changed it again, and I made a call to the line of scrimmage, and we adjusted, and we stopped them, and now it's third down. And, and I looked to the sideline, and he calls the same thing again. I'm like, you moron, what are you doing? So I start yelling at him, and I switched it again, and this time they scored. And I came to the sideline, and Tom Flory said something to me like, what are you doing? And I just tore into him. I just started screaming at him. I didn't care. 
I mean, it's a, we got a game to win. So I took a few more steps, and Ted Hendricks looked at me and said, Rookie, that's a nice way to get yourself cut. At its core, it never changes. And our game has evolved from stage to stage. You know, from the 30s to the 40s to the 60s, all the way through. And, um, and it's still changing. But there are some things that never change. Blocking and tackling. And it's a simple, simple game. You find the ball and you drill them. And the important thing about tackling, there's only one thing that matters when you tackle. It's getting them down. However you have, whatever you have to do to get them down, you get them down. And, and there are, you know, there are the Jack Tatums who, who did it with great collision. And there are other guys who just pulled them down by a finger or grabbed them by the jersey or, you know, whatever it takes. Sometimes it's a face mask and there's a flag. Sometimes it's a face mask and there's no flags. And guess what? That's a good tackle.